the things that I'm, you don't have to do anymore, what were they? I'm, se- I'm 75 tomorrow. Happy and, birthday. Yeah, thank you. And the whole point is, this business has been on the news ever since we signed up to join. And every time something happened, it was worse for us. How? Okay. Can you give me one well, example? Do you yes, think? I can. Go on then, because yes, it's been a while. Yes, I can. Go on then. Um, when, when Margaret Thatcher decided that we were going to be the money changers of Europe, right. and, and we, were, we were at that point a fairly important manufacturing country. Yes. And you're going to say, yes, but we tend all our manufacturing to China. Well, because you keep telling me what I'm going to say. I just wish you'd concentrate on what you're going to say when I ask you what you actually well, won. In t- it's the, for the final time, because I'm late for the news, and I don't, I don't want to interrupt your birthday what, preparations. What, what did you win? I say, I here's the prize good. that you celebrated. What are you pointing at? Uh, I'm pointing at, at um, the, the common market. Right. Have a great birthday, won't you? Leading Britain's conversation, LBC, with James O'Brien. It's 10 to 12, um, and in the final hour, I think, of our week together, we'll turn our attention to FIFA this morning, deciding to tell all the nations heading to Qatar to folk to compete in the World Cup to be quiet about the country that they're visiting and focus instead on the football. I, I, I think that's quite a, an interesting conversation. And in response to a few of you suggesting that we should get John Sweeney on full disclosure, I'm way ahead of you, Andy and others. He's already been on. He's, 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 he can check it out on the uh, global player. Um, but we will just mop up this slightly dispiriting conversation, I think we can agree. I mean, luckily we're all in good moods and, 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 and warm and, and friendly and even old Oliver there celebrating he knows not what, but thankfully tomorrow on his 75th birthday he will have something to celebrate, so we can all wish him well for that. But all of these people still claiming that they don't regret their Brexit vote, but still utterly unable to tell you what it is that they want. You've even got um, someone called Brendan Clark Smith. Have you come across him? He's he's one of the new... Well, I, you know, I haven't checked, but judging by his uh, public pronouncements, I have to presume that he was one of the 2019 intake because they really have seen, just when you thought British politics couldn't get any lower, the 2019 intake of Tories started drilling through the bottom of the barrel. I don't know what, what happens next, what's under there. So here it is. You know, if you thought that Oliver was a bit of a an echo of conversations past, you have Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of England, explaining today why Brexit is a key reason for interest rates having to go up, reminding us that he said in 2016 that the the devaluation of sterling that would inevitably follow Brexit would hit growth and productivity and therefore lead to uh, rises in inflations uh, just as night follows day. But Brendan Clark Smith, who has not, to the best of my knowledge, ever run a central bank, never mind more than one, um, I don't know that, I mean, I, I don't know what his qualifications are, but he has tweeted in the last couple of hours while we've been on air, he's, he's tweeted that that's absolute tosh. So the days of thinking that it was perfectly feasible that Jacob Rees-Mogg would have a better grasp of international trade than um, the governor of the Bank of England, the the days of thinking that Nadine Dorries would have a better grasp of politics than every living prime minister, the days of thinking that uh, Digby Pudding Jones had a better understanding of imports and exports than pretty much every importer and exporter in the country. The days of thinking that David Davis really knew his onions when he started talking about German car manufacturers and what those days are not over because here you have someone called Brendan Clark Smith with the qualifications, apparently the insights and the intelligence to tell Mark Carney, the former governor of the Bank of England, that he is talking absolute tosh. And that is a pretty good illustration of what it looks like when your brooch of purest green is glinting in the sunlight. Richard's in St Albans. Richard, sorry to keep you. What would you like to say? Oh, hi, James. How are you? Very well. Um, yeah, how, how do I follow John Sweeney? Um, look, I, um, I was originally calling in because of the, the guy that was wanting uh, the inquiry. Yes. Um, but now, now I'm kind of wondering, uh, 
you know, I'm reaching for my application for my Irish passport. I'm thinking, uh, uh, do I live in a country where there are 17 million people like Oliver who, there are, who I, actually... I, that, well, listen, to be fair to Oliver, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think there are 17 million people like that, clearly. But also, he was yeah. quite a nice bloke. Let's not be too mean was, to him. Yeah. He, he wasn't yeah. wanging on about refugees or, 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 or sucking Absolutely. the Farage Kool-Aid or anything yeah. like that. So we could do yeah. worse than have... And maybe, Absolutely. maybe yeah. after that conversation, he's, he's close to recognising the error of his vote in 2016. Absolutely. And probably that's probably even darker than that people aren't real, they're yeah. not realising what's been fed into their... No, so, that, so, yeah... I, I kind of I think it's easy to get angry about these things, but I kind of decided. I mean, I won't go into my background, but so many things have like I wouldn't say triggered me, but I can relate mm. to so many things. And I'm, I've come to the conclusion that look, if we do an inquiry, then that's quite a combative thing. It's like you know, my dad's bigger than your dad, and who was right and who was wrong. It's, it's, it's judge it's led though. Judge, judge led. You don't think it would be objective? It wouldn't have the the, the veneer oh. of, of 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 impartiality. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. But, yeah, possibly. So I'm thinking, let, let's try and be a bit, maybe we can be a bit more innovative and let's look at South Africa where they have the, I say the word truth and reconciliation yeah. committee. Maybe that's what we need. We need people to sit, and the guy that behind that actually lives in the UK now, he, he's created a very good club in London. But oh. yeah, we, we know these people are out there. Yeah, I won't, I won't say the name online, but um, it's, it's what I think we need the truth and we need the reconciliation because you know, when you're candid, in my line of work, when you're candid to people, when they hear, they know it. They know you're telling them the truth. And they go, "Yeah, you're right. You know what? We need to do something about this." And I think, I think what I, this is a personal thing, and I don't know if other people feel it, but I feel we we need to get back our society. We need to sort of take the and, politics and do you, out. Do you, of you it. think we can't do that? Because I, I I I just have a twenty percent lean towards the idea of maybe if we all agreed never to mention it again, we could get on with fixing <laughs> all of the problems and filling in all the potholes in the road without ever having to rub the faces of the people that dug the potholes into... into That's just silly, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's just silly. Yeah, we will be very British about it. Say, oh, don't worry about it. Let's all just have a cup of tea and carry on. Um, but that would be like giving somebody, uh, you know, putting your kids but if on you've school got, bus if you've got the drivers looking in his rearview mirror. You know? <laughs> if you've got people like Brendan Clark-Smith calling still, mm. say, and I'm just learning a little bit more about him from some of his constituents. Yeah. He, used to, he used to be a teacher in Transylvania, apparently, which, you you know, say what you like about Mark Carney. He's never been a teacher in Transylvania. Yeah. But uh, if, if you still got people somewhere. like him. So even if you had a Truth and Reconciliation Commission, people like Brendan Clark-Smith would still, and no doubt Reese Mogg and Dorries and the rest of them and Andrew brainless bridging and digby pudding jones they'd still mm, be mm. tweeting oh absolute tosh it's just not true the, these are people who could be standing there soaked to the skin claiming that it's not raining I, and and so i don't know but you, you you'd have a cold bunch of committees where what you just did with oliver you would mm. literally get him in uh, that that was a world-class therapy session james i, I mean hope so. you, you i hope you've got people to realize just how empty it all is because mm. I mean, I, you know, I've got a degree in economics. I can talk about these things. I've got plenty of experience. But, yeah, I've gone from anger to frustration thinking, you know, where, what, what happened to my society? I want my country back. How do I do it? And I don't think politics is the answer. I mean, like, you know, I used, no. I used to be a Tory councillor. Uh, I don't want to get in politics. I just don't think politics is the answer. So I'm thinking, you know, how do this we... This needs to society? be something different, something separate. Something different, yeah. Something, um, you know, how do, we, how do we run an NHS that's not about politics it's just run well how do we have a train service that's just well go just i think works. we're getting politics and governance mixed up so good yes, good, absolutely. good yeah. governance is what we need and we don't really mind who provides it and, yeah we need good management you know we don't just need leaders standing up spouting um strap lines great leaders are very good managers as well and you've got to you know the execution is lacking and that's you know that's why companies fail that's why people fail that's why mm. organizations fail and that's why governments are failing because these people are just stuck in dogma um, and, 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 they, and then, of course, the, the, the really bad stuff happens when they stand up in the House of Commons and accuse the other lot of being the ones that are stuck in dogma, as Kemi Badenoch did yesterday, which was a moment of, of purest green. A few people asking what on earth I'm talking about when I use the phrase, if you tuned in a little late. It's a Black Adder reference. So Percy invents a new precious metal. He's trying to make gold like an alchemist, and he invents green. It's utterly worthless. It's like old mouldy Play-Doh, but he, he, he imbues it with epic value. A bar brooch of purest green. Maybe you have to watch it. I can't do justice to the to the script writers or indeed to uh, Tim Tim McInerney's brilliant performance. Last word on this, and it's going to go to Doris, who's in hunger for Doris. I don't have long, but I wanted to hear your voice. What would you like to say? I admire your stamina. Thank you. Um, I just <laughs> wanted to say I voted Brexit 
but I'm a committed European. I was born in Germany and I've lived here over 50 years. But when Cameron made the statement, I will give you a referendum in our own thought, right, mm. I'll let you have it. I never thought it would happen. Oh, gosh. N- never thought it would happen. I, I, I regret it deeply and I feel I ought to move back to Germany. <laughs> well, at least you can. It's not an option that's, ava- it's not an option that's available could, to the rest of us anymore. So just, just to be clear, you wanted to give David Cameron a bloody nose, but you didn't yes. want to knock him out. That's right. And right. the other uh, argument I had, of all those years <laughs> I've lived here, every five minutes it was blamed, everything was blamed on the EU. When we got money back, oh, that was fine. But everything else there was always we we want to what was the slogan? Take we back don't control. Want to be governed by the more, but uh, we want to be in, but we don't want to be governed by the God, EU. I and I got so cross. But here I am. <laughs> Eating my words. Well, I, 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 and, and I, I welcome your your eating of your words and indeed your explanation. And you remind all of us that there are millions of people, hopefully, who, who did it for perfectly feasible reasons, which they have had plenty of time to regret and, and repent. And, and I don't think old Oliver was a, too far away from that realisation either, bless him. But... Of course, as long as you've got people like Brendan Clark Smith and uh, David Campbell Bannerman has just done it now. He's just tweeted that Mark Carney uh, is wrong. What he said is simply not true. I, I mean, it really is now at the point where these people are being shown an enormous bucket of water and they're claiming that it's not water. I mean, it is. I, I don't even know. I don't even I don't have an analogy to describe the level of delusion you would need as a Brendan Clark Smith or a David Campbell Bannerman to be essentially, well, you know, punched in the face and claim that it's a kiss. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with James O'Brien. Four minutes after 12 is the time you're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. Complete change of pace now. I, I enjoyed that, but not in the ways necessarily that we used to enjoy it. I, I, I used to enjoy those conversations because I felt that the more bricks we could assemble the 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 sturdier our wall would be and that with a sturdy wall we might we might be able to begin building uh, back uh, uh, an antidote to brexit i mean essentially up until 2019 i still thought there was a way out i still thought that measure twice cut once would be the wise path to take i still felt that jacob rees mogg believe it or not was correct when he talked about the wisdom of having one referendum on whether we should try to leave and then another referendum on what leaving would actually look like because in the end of course we ended up with Boris Johnson essentially garnering public support for a for a farrago of lies a complete set of lies about what it would actually mean and then spending three years dancing around claiming that getting it done was somehow an achievement despite the fact that what he got done bore no resemblance whatsoever to what he said he was going to get done I mean, I still can't believe it, you know. That's why I haven't talked about it for so long. And now focusing on these uh, these calumnies, these egregious deceptions, and just marvelling, to be honest with you, at the scale of them. That advert I played you earlier is breathtaking, absolutely breathtaking. But um, But here we are. So it doesn't feel like it did back in the day. It feels very different now. It's the difference between being in the open seas with a life belt and being in the open seas without one. I, I don't know what happens now, you know? I, I, I really don't. And that's really where this morning's question came from, about what do we do, as uh, West Side Story almost asked, what do we do with a problem like Brexit? Now, that's uh, Sound of Music. I always get that mixed up. I wish they wouldn't have two classic musicals, both with the star major character called Maria, because I always think the song the song in Sound of Music is what, what do you do with a problem like Maria, isn't it? Or how do you solve a problem like Maria? That's not West Side Story. Imagine if you've just tuned in, eh? Who, who is this player? And what on earth is he talking about? Well, football, actually, and politics. Um, the idea that they can't go 
hand in hand is palpably absurd. Again, uh, to return to some of our favourite people, it's a lie put out by essentially racist people that footballers should shut up about racism or, or, or shouldn't take the knee or shouldn't do Black Lives Matter. Either racist people or people pandering to racist people. It's, a, it's an interesting distinction, that, and one that's crucial to modern British politics. But Qatar, and, and I may change my pronunciation of this in the course of the next hour, depending on the consensus that emerges. You say Qatar, Qatar, and I think of phlegm. Um, Qatar, I think I've heard people pronounce it as Qatar. Uh, they have, as you know, won the World Cup. It is, well, not won the World Cup. They've won the right to host the World Cup, and it kicks off imminently. I, I, I mean, it's, it starts. When do you think it starts, lads? Seriously, that's a bit sexist. And, 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 and lasses, lads and lasses. When do you think it starts? Have a guess, go on. When do you think? When do you think it starts? Do you know when it starts? You can't play this game unless you... And it, no, no, yeah, that's a good guess, actually. I, it starts on the 20th of November. It starts in 18 days' time. I said to you yesterday that I'm pretty sure that in all um, previous years of World Cup, I've had, my, I've had my wall chart up by now. I've had my figurini paninis. I'm not even sure who's in England's group. Are you? Do you know? It is the most bizarre World Cup ever. We're not doing the football side of it. We, we, may, have a, we may treat ourselves to a couple of football phone-ins in, in, once the tournament is actually underway, but not now. It starts in 18 days' time. It's, well, it's actually it's fewer than 18 days' time, isn't it? Because this thing I'm reading has is, is got the... It's a different, so what's the date today? Today is the 5th. Re, well, remember, remember. The 5th of November. So it starts two weeks tomorrow. There you go. It's only eight minutes past 12. We got there in the end. The World Cup, right, it starts two weeks tomorrow. Who'd have thunk it? Hey? Unbelievable. And there's no excitement at all as far as... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm knocking around. Am I mixing in the wrong circles? Are you, are you, are you people excited? You are excited? You are? <sighs> but it is a massive problem because Qatar... Qatar is a pretty hideous place for gay people, for migrant workers, for... Anyone who believes in human rights, so the cabinet will be fine there. That's one thing I suppose we can say. The cabinet will love it because they've got an appalling human rights record. And we, of course, are currently governed by people who, who think that human rights are too much fuss and too much bother. Here's what they've said. FIFA, and that's the World Footballing Authority. That's not anything to do with Qatar, but FIFA obviously is historically quite a corrupt. It's had huge problems with allegations of and indeed evidence of corruption over the years. They've written to all 32 teams competing at the World Cup, telling them to now focus on the football, which I think is pretty grim. Don't you? I mean, that is essentially an instruction from on high to ignore the bad stuff. If I were to seek to defend it, I would say something like, this is going to be hard. I'm trying to sort of imagine what FIFA's motivation might be. Then you would say something like, the foot... <sighs> I've got nothing. Come on, we've got to be able to get... We've got a bit. It's the fourth of November today. It's the f I even got it wrong. Why does nobody help me? Well, I'm sick. I, I know it's on the screen, but I get distracted. You know what happens in the third hour of the program? My blood sugar goes down. My green tea stop working. I'm thinking about the weekend ahead. It's the fourth of November today, so the football starts two weeks on Sunday. Is that right? <laughs> I should have got a cheer there, Keith. You should have concentrated. Should have been like a stadium style sound effect. There should have been a whoop, like a Mexican wave on the radio. I apologise for playing fast and loose with the calendar. I wondered why the phones were ringing. There's always a bit of a scare in the studio when I haven't asked a question and the phones start ringing off the hook and I think, oh my days, what's happened? Either there's some terrible breaking news that, that people have actually witnessed or I've dropped quite a clangor on the radio. So I just glanced down thinking, what clangor have I dropped on the radio? I've got the, I got the date wrong. So... FIFA has told all of the teams, the 32 teams competing at the World Cup, to now focus on the football. And I am going to ask you very simply what you think about that. 0345 6060 973. Some examples of uh, problems or, or context. So Jurgen Klopp, 
the Liverpool manager, some of whose players will be making their way to Qatar, has said it's not fair to expect players to make political statements or protests at the tournament. That's interesting. Uh, Jordan Henderson, an England midfielder, said a lot gets put on players on should the World Cup be played there and everything that goes with that, but the players don't decide where the World Cup is played. That's interesting. He also added, we do little things that try and show people we are all one, we are all inclusive, and that is why that campaign was brought to light. Now, that campaign refers to something that Harry Kane is going to be doing, along with nine other captains of European teams. They will be wearing One Love armbands, which I, I presume are designed to celebrate same-sex relationships, which remain illegal in the country where the football will be played. Denmark is going to wear toned-down shirts. The kit provider has said it does not wish to be visible in a tournament it claims has cost thousands of lives. That's a fairly hefty intervention from Hummel, the clothing manufacturers. And, and it refers to the migrant workers who have reportedly been working in deeply dangerous and lethal conditions. Australia's squad have released a video urging Qatar to abolish its laws on same-sex relationships. In Paris and other French cities, the matches are not going to be screened in public areas, which is all the more remarkable when you remember that France are actually the defending champions. They are the current holders of the World Cup. It's the FIFA president, Gianni Infantino, and the secretary-general, Fatma Samora, who have signed this letter, and it reads, We know football does not live in a vacuum, and we are equally aware that there are many challenges and difficulties of a political nature all around the world, but please do not allow football to be dragged into every ideological or political battle that exists. Now, I will open the phone line shortly, and I want to hear what you think about this, 0345 6060 but it seems to me that this tournament should never have been awarded to Qatar. And as is often the case with FIFA, it may be years before we find out the real reasons um, why this decision was taken. The tournament should never, ever in a million years have been given to a country with such an appalling human rights record. And I'm afraid whether you like it or not, there are um, hierarchies of abuses you know, so it would be almost impossible to find a country that was squeaky clean, I think. But equally, it would be very, very hard to find one in the free world, for want of a better phrase, that was as bad as as this country is. So, you, you know, you can't. Well, we had it in, in America and they invaded Afghanistan or something like that. I know I understand those arguments and I know exactly who you think should be leader of the Labour Party, but they're not really helpful in the context of grown-ups having a conversation. There has to be a line, and that line probably should be below, <laughs> or Qatar should be below that line. They shouldn't really be able to host the World Cup. So what FIFA are doing, it seems to me, is essentially saying... We've done something really stupid. Please don't talk about it. Which means the question that footballers face as they make their way to Qatar is what should footballers be doing? And I don't know the answer to that. I would have thought they followed their conscience, which would involve some of them speaking out quite loudly and some of them saying absolutely nothing at all because they are not engaged in the process or they're not confident of their own positions. Uh, some footballers will be uh, incredibly well informed about what has gone on and perhaps incredibly comfortable about going there. But if if they are going there, this is where I got close to a defence of FIFA four minutes ago. If they are going there, can you see any sense in what Jurgen Klopp has said? Is the only way? Here it is. Oh, there is. There is a defence. I knew I'd get there in the end once I got the date right. There is... I'm going to lose it again now. It's going to slip out of my garage. Do you ever get that with, with quite difficult thoughts? So in, I know it's age. So in order to protect football players from pressure, to comment on things they don't know a lot about, or even, and this is a bit of a criticism, but not a big one, even perhaps things they don't particularly care about, there is this, this sense 
that players are expected to make political statements. They are expected to make protests. In order to protect those players who don't want to or don't understand or even don't care, then FIFA suggests that for the purposes of this tournament, the footballers should concentrate on the football. Listen, I'm just imagining what's going on in their heads or trying to come up with a vague defence of it. I'm pretty confident that my original analysis is accurate. They've done something really, really stupid, really stupid, and they're begging the footballers not to talk about it. What do you want to happen? 03456060973 is the number you need. What, what? What do you want to happen? What do you want the footballers to do about the human rights abuses and the, the appalling regime in Qatar? If a kit provider can in, insist on having its presence removed from the Danish team's shirts because, and I quote, the tournament has cost thousands of lives, it does rather put the pressure on everybody else involved to, to say or do something. But if they're going anyway, if they're playing... Does protest become hypocritical? Because, of course, no one's voting with their feet, are they? Leading Britain's conversation, LBC, with James O'Brien. It's 21 minutes after 12. Football and politics, eh? It's always interesting, but this is a particularly pungent proposal from FIFA that football is heading towards Qatar, where uh, it is believed that many migrant workers died in the construction of stadia and same-sex relationships remain illegal just some of the human rights abuses that the country stands accused of the footballers should should shut up and play football as sir gavin williamson might say ash in leicester ash what do you reckon hi james um pleasure to speak to me i think um it's it's a little bit unfair for us um, first of all i think it's atrocious that qatar got the thing to, yeah. to begin with but it's quite unfair to ask the players to be that leading voice because you know blaming the players for not coming out and speaking about it is very much similar like similar to uh blaming people who voted for brexit oh, don't bring brexit for... into it man we're just done for goodness <laughs> sake what's wrong with you honestly was, how did you do that I was adrenaline pumping through i'm very sorry That's okay. but <laughs> it's but, but it, it's very much like saying oh you, you know, blaming the people who brought us Brexit, and it, this is the same thing. It's it, it's FIFA. It's not I like mean, that. As, it, it, the people honest, who voted for Brexit are to blame for Brexit. They aren't. You, you, they you are. Look, look contempt, contempt. Yes, I can contempt. have compassion for them, but it is still their fault. I, I, I appreciate what you're saying, but I think okay, may, may, maybe I did. Maybe it's I not the best that. analogy. That let's think of a better analogy. It's it's like um, it's like trying to blame. Soldiers for a war. There you go. There, there you, you go. go. That's yeah, better. that's better. That's why you get paid the big bucks. Ah, you're not but, wrong. Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so let's look at it this way. I'm an Iranian. And uh, obviously, I'm sure everyone's aware of the atrocious things that, that the government's doing. Yes. And I would very much like Iran to, to, to not be in it because it, it, it's not right for them to be on the world stage and make that. St and. and, and, and whilst the government's doing what they're doing to their people. Yeah. But am I going to expect people to come out and say stuff about uh, their players, sorry, to come out and say stuff about it? No, it's it's not fair to expect uh, them. That's to interesting. That. I, and I, I, actually, while I've got you on, we'll do a little more, I think, on, on the situation in Iran next week. We, we should have done something last week but or this week. But it's, the, it's the, one of the first games. It's England's first game is against Iran, isn't it, on the 21st of November? Yeah. That's correct. I... I the fact that it is in Qatar makes mm -hmm. it almost impossible for FIFA to tell Iran, this is me thinking out loud and, and asking you whether you agree or not, to tell Iran that they can't come. Because if you, you say to Iran, your human rights abuses are so awful that you can't come to the World Cup, Iran turn around and say, sorry again, where are you holding it, lads? There you go. Yeah. There you go. God. And and it's, you, you know, so I, I, the, the main people that should be held responsible, obviously Qatar should be held responsible for their atrocious acts uh, towards human rights. But FIFA are the people who are, you know, let's, let's not forget, FIFA are on the, the, the squeaky cleanest of, of all. And they are the ones that should be held responsible yeah. for allowing this to happen. Yeah, place. well, they, they are. But, you see, no, I mean, I, under, I, I understand what you're saying and agree with you up to a point about pressure being put on footballers. But let's say no pressure is being put on footballers to protest or to make a stand. But FIFA is putting pressure on footballers not to protest and not to make a stand. So there's two different conversations here. And you've... 
you've kind of conflated the two. So FIFA is saying, shut up and play football, everybody. So, mm -hmm. Some players don't want to do any. So the ones that do should be free to do whatever the heck they want. FIFA should be saying, if you want to wear an armband, if you want to make a speech, if you want to start a petition, if you want to start, because these are huge issues, then you can do it. But, but other players are being told by their own managers or their own teammates, don't you worry about it. I mean, some of them are going to be as thick as three short planks, aren't they? Asking them to comment on complicated matters of international politics would be a, a little bit ridiculous. So you can just... So, so it depends where the pressure is coming from. Pressure on footballers to protest is, is unhelpful. But pr footballers who want to protest coming under pressure not to do so, that's worse. Absolutely. I mean, the, the fo footballers should be given the right and the platform to, to uh, express how they feel about this in uh, and, and 100%. Uh, mm. And uh, obviously FIFA don't want that because FIFA care about their image and they want everyone to, to, to be quiet and enjoy the football. Hey, lads, let's enjoy the football. Of course, that's where they're going to come from. So uh, they should have stayed quiet then, really, Ash, shouldn't they? Absolutely. FIFA should just have buttoned it. That, 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 let, that letter that they sent out was was. Gross. It's it, yeah. it, 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 it's essentially saying, shut up. Let, let us let us carry on doing what we're doing, and you just show you know you just go on and put a good it's show. The Gavin Williamson of letters is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. <laughs> oh. I like it. And and actually, what would happen if the Iranian football team did express solidarity with the protesters back at home? Oh, nothing. Nothing good is going to come out of that for them personally. I mean, you, you, unless they never go home. <laughs> Their families are there. I know. Um, I know. This, 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 this regime has got no shame when it comes to uh, brutalizing people for speaking their minds, um, and and it's going to continue to do so until um, until they are put in their place, which is out of that country. I think the Ukrainian FA, a couple of people are telling me another Ash actually. So you haven't been texting while you've been talking, have you, Ash? <laughs> no, no, that would no, be no, very no. clever. But another Ash is telling me that the Ukrainian FA is currently in the process of trying to of appealing FIFA to get Iran thrown out of the World Cup. Well, you, oh, I, you presumably wouldn't want them there. I, I don't want them. No. I, I, I want Iran. So I find that government to be, you know, obviously I've already expressed how I feel about that government. Yes, and the, the fact, the fact, the fact that they've, they've, uh, obviously, they are supporting Russia in this war as well. So I fully appreciate where Ukraine are coming from, and I sympathize with them, and I do not want Iran to be there. But again, as you mentioned yourself, you know, Qatar, Iran, and uh, FIFA don't want anything to do with it as long as the competition goes ahead. Mm. And, um, you know, perhaps maybe uh, people in the stadiums can let their feelings be uh, be heard. When, when and, that, and, that, and that is why played. FIFA, I love your word gross, I'm going to borrow it. That is why FIFA's intervention at this time in this way is indeed gross, because it, 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 it essentially discourages and, and one step away from discouraging, of course, is forbid. For, discourages protest against some pretty egregious human rights abuses. And uh, thank you, Ash, that's a perfect call. And actually... A text that came in while you were talking is another topic that we might uh, tuck into next week. I'll be boycotting the World Cup. I cannot support a tournament built on slavery, says this texter. And that, of course, is, is automatically going to have your heckles, right? Because you automatically think, well, I'm not thinking of boycotting it. And because I now feel a bit ashamed or a bit embarrassed about the fact that I'm not planning on boycotting it, when, I mean, really, I should be you're probably going to start taking a swing at the person that sent that text. I'm describing my own psychology now. It's a bit like the oil protests or vegetarian. You know they're right. And the fact that you you don't have the courage of, that, of, of your convictions, you won't go as far as they go, means you've got to attack them. So boycotting it, I'm poof. And then, of course, you remember old 30p Lee who wanted to boycott the last big tournament because some footballers were taking the knee in protest against racism. It was 30p Lee who did that, wasn't it? Goodness me, it'd be interesting to check in with him. So you boycotted it after over people protesting against racism. Are you going to boycott the tournament that England are playing in in protest about the fact that it's been hosted by a country that actually outlaws same-sex relationships and has seen thousands of migrant workers treated appallingly um, in, in, in many cases to the point of death? Or are you all right with that? And then, of course, if you're giving him a hard time for not boycotting this one, you're left with the question, well, why aren't you boycotting it yourself? I think say that you're boycotting it and then watch it at home on your own on the telly is probably the politician's way out of this particular problem. But what are you going to do? James O'Brien on LBC.
12.34 is the time. What should happen? It's a funny one. And what do we think about FIFA essentially telling footballers to shut up and go away when it comes to protesting against some of the appalling abuses uh, that are commonplace in Qatar? Uh, it's it's pretty grim. I Actually, as promised, just in response to Ash's call, Omid Jalili, who, who was in the studio a couple of weeks ago talking about the situation in Iran, has provided some characteristically detailed coverage of that um, that issue, the issue of the Islamic Republic of Iran's team going to the World Cup. I'm going to share it all with you. Ukraine is asking for them to be kicked out because they say that Iran is supplying arms to Russia. If that's true, then Iran would be breaking the UN Security Council Resolution 2231, which stipulates they are forbidden to export weapons. But Omid writes, that's not half of it. FIFA Article 3 is committed to respecting human rights. And he points out that Iran has a brutal human rights record. But as we pointed out to Ash, or to each other, Ash and I pointed out to each other, pretty hard to tell Iran they can't come to a World Cup because of their human rights record when the World Cup's being held in Qatar. It's actually it's Kafkaesque, uh, Qataresque. Uh, the recent deaths during anti-regime protests currently stand at 250. This is in Iran, with 13,000 demonstrators currently in jail. Mass killings and acts of terror over the last 43 years are innumerable. FIFA Article 4 says it doesn't tolerate discrimination on any grounds, including gender, and yet women are still not allowed to watch football matches in stadiums in Iran. Imagine if black people were banned, or homosexuals, or Muslims, or Jews, asks Omid. Article 19 states that a government cannot interfere in a football federation. In Iran, that's beyond a joke because the federation is controlled by the government. They mute the sound on TV broadcasts of recent friendlies in order to drown out anti-regime slogans being chanted by fans. Number, point number five made by Omid, no one blames the players. They wore black tracksuits covering the national flag. They've come out in support of the protests, some of them. Domestic football matches are played behind closed doors. The players do not celebrate when they score a goal in order to show respect for dead protesters. I didn't know that. And then Omid gets quite personal. He says, I have been anticipating a competitive England versus Iran game all my life. And if you listen to Omid Jalili's appearance on Full Disclosure, you'll, you'll, you'll understand why. This would be such an amazing moment for him in, 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 in bearable circumstances. I have been anticipating a competitive England versus Iran game all my life. My dream game, in fact. I would love to see Iran play Wales, England and the United States. But with such blatant abuses of FIFA's own charter, how on earth have Iran not been kicked out already? He goes on, dream scenario, game goes ahead, Iranian players applauded for showing up, the fans chant slogans throughout the games, Iran score, the players refuse to celebrate, the more they progress, the weaker the regime becomes. And now he gets a bit carried away. He goes, after powering to the final, upon a wave of global goodwill, Iran play England again and win the World Cup. They return to Tehran as heroes. The regime topples. I, this is Omid Jalili writing, I am voted president with an overwhelming majority. Carlos Queiroz becomes the first supreme leader of the Portuguese Republic of Iran. Um, he proves to be a great supreme leader. Things start going wrong when he appoints hardline Mike Phelan as his vice supremo. And this when the overwhelmingly popular choice of Mullah Ronaldinho had expressed an interest in the role. Um, very in interesting. I mean, not, I mean, it is important. The first half of that thread was important. The second half was important in its own way as well, because comedy is the greatest energy en enemy of fascism imaginable. They hate being mocked. Absolutely hate it. Just, just as the uh, leaders in Iran, so with Donald Trump, they hate, hate, hate being mocked. Whereas, of course, well-adjusted normal people can generally take it all in their stride. That that thread from. Uh, Omid Jalili concluding with some footage of, of what these protests are and what they mean. So just one element of the problems that have been created really by FIFA, uh, in this case by one of the teams that's going to the World Cup, never mind the destination uh, and the host of said cup. Will's in Beckenham. Will, what made you pick up the phone? Uh, hi, James. Um, how are you? Very well. What's on your mind? Uh, I work in football, so I just have a kind of a little bit more of a magnifying glass on the whole situation. Yeah. And obviously, the whole... Voting for Qatar was was Ash referred to FIFA not wanting to ruin their image. I think their image was ruined long before that this World Cup was uh, or this World Cup was going ahead. But since we've had the opportunity, and human rights record in Qatar goes way beyond just this World Cup. Mm. It's a per it's a perfect it's a perfect kickstand for for protest in in any shape or form, and and could show billion dancers who may not know what's going on in Qatar. Uh, Jane in, in Weymouth, what's actually happening 
and it could give a real kind of kickstart to change. And that's the only positive I can see. It's not so every to... every interview for, for players who want to do this, and, and we're going to have to accept that there are going to be some pressures on players who don't want to, or don't understand, or even perhaps don't care. <laughs> But players yeah. who want to do this should avail themselves of every single opportunity that they can find to shine light onto um, some of the issues. To shine light, to shine light on the issues. Football is in our day and age. They are, they are the old-fashioned politicians. They are the role models of our society. They are, yeah, and they are many of them. They're, they're the highest paid and they're the highest watched, and, and they are they are idols to so many. So on their platform, they are the rock stars of our society. So if they can use their... And it would be a nightmare for the regime in Qatar, wouldn't it, for the real superstars? I mean, there's other conversations being had about whether whether well-known faces should have accepted sackloads, truckloads of cash in order to sort of go there and help promote it all. But when the superstars of the tournament, some of whom won't be household names yet, one of the best things about the World Cup are the, are the superstars that emerge shortly before getting bought by Manchester City. The, 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 the superstars of the tournament actually pour shade on, on the regime in Qatar, then that's, that's, that's their worst nightmare, isn't it? Exactly. Throw dirt. The World Cup's not going to get postponed midway through just because of of what's coming no. to sh- the shame to the country. So it's, it's a perfect, it's a perfect chance. Why do you think FIFA have done this thing? Why do you think they've even sent this letter? Just to keep, the, I mean, to say, so they can turn to the you, to the sheikhs and say, look, we've done our best. I mean, why? I think it makes no sense to me. This, I think for me, FIFA, um, I speak on my own terms and, and not of those that the club I represent, but FIFA to me, the skeleton hasn't changed. It may have changed in, in, the, in the personnel and, and uh, yeah. the, the slow process of weeding out of certain certain individuals but to me the skeleton's not changed and then the spine of, of that corruption will it's, it's all there isn't it and it's such a silly I mean well as I said earlier we may we may one day find out whether or not there are other reasons why this decision was taken but absolutely no pressure at all upon FIFA to award the tournament to a country that has such an appalling human rights record um, if you do the right things, Jordan Henderson giving a thoughtful interview to uh, the Beeb, I think. If you do the right things, that is most important. Unless everyone is just not going to turn up, then no matter what people say, it's never going to be enough. So you do what you can. Ultimately, not turning up would be the loudest protest of all. But that ain't going to happen, whether it should have done. If I was Elon Musk, I'd, I'd, have, I'd, have, I'd have offered up an alternative World Cup. I wouldn't have bought Twitter this week. I would have just said, all right, I'll host it. And it doesn't have to be, even if it was unofficial and it was away from FIFA, you say, you're rich enough. Look, I'll I'll just borrow, I'll I'll just borrow Chicago or something like that and and all the stadia. No, you're not buying this? What's the point of being Elon Musk if you're not going to be a force for good? Instead of sacking everyone that works at Twitter and letting all the weirdos and racists back on the platform, he should have just said, I know, I know he's probably not that into the soccer as they call it over there, but he could have, he could have just said, right, I will actually step in, I'll side I'll sidestep FIFA, I'll nutmeg FIFA, even, and I will host a, an unofficial World Cup, and I'll invite all thirty two countries except Iran, and whoever wins it will be a bit like that James Bond film with Sean Connery in it. Never say never again. It's like a Bond film that wasn't a Bond film. So the twenty twenty two World Cup will be the one that wasn't actually official. It was never actually official, but it was still a Bond film because it had Sean Connery in it playing James Bond, but it wasn't made by Cubby Broccoli. Am I stretching this a little bit too far? I don't think I am. I think this is creativity, radio creativity at its absolute finest. So it would be exactly like that. If Elon Musk hosted his own unofficial World Cup, it would be exactly like the James Bond film Never Say Never Again that starred Sean Connery, but wasn't actually a proper James Bond film. So the 2022 World Cup would be a World Cup, but it might not be a proper World Cup. We would all think of it as a World Cup and it would go down in history as an actual World Yeah, I'll stop now. Uh, Melvin's in Labrook Grove. Melvin, what have you got? Hi, James. Um, firstly, I, I don't often call in to you because you say everything that I would want to say more eloquently. Oh, what but a lovely time. thing to say. Thank you. There's a butt coming. Uh, is there a butt coming? Is no, there a no, big no. butt so, coming? This time, no. I, think, I think there's just some things to add some insight. Okay. So the first thing is, um, I think it's ridiculous to talk about cancelling the World Cup at the 11th hour and anybody who thinks they shouldn't go ahead. Mm. I think if we were going to do that, we should have done it uh, halfway along whilst the stadiums were being built and whilst the human rights record was getting worse. Mm. So we are where we are now and the tournament needs to go ahead. Um and there's two things about that. So the first thing is FIFA telling players not to speak up about yeah. it is ridiculous. Um, 
mainly because it's not, it, you know, people need to have their own voice. And the first thing that jumped out to me was Lewis Hamilton in the oh, Formula yes. One. Yes. Why? Because so many criticisms of Lewis Hamilton has been shut up and race, stop highlighting these things. I think he's, a, he's, he's, he's managed to walk a really tricky tightrope quite beautifully, actually, over the Absolutely. years, hasn't he? Absolutely. And who better than to speak up about injustice than people with great platforms? Mm. So the two absolute worst people for Qatar, for FIFA right now, to speak up about these issues would be Kylian Mbappe of France and or Cristiano Ronaldo. Those would be the absolute two worst people because they've probably got the biggest two platforms globally. Um, so having said that, uh, well, not even having said that, so the follow-on from that is the reason why it'd be good for the World Cup to go ahead in this country is ultimately world issues quite often are only issues that are popular. So the world's media are going to be there, the world's icons are going to be there, and if a few of them speak up about the issues, it's going to shine a light on those issues and people are going to begin to speak about them more. The pressure will increase and ultimately the swell of that pressure will actually encourage or force countries like Qatar and Iran to change. I, I beautifully put, and I think Lewis Hamilton could almost give a masterclass or media training to some of the football players on how to um, be a, how, how to properly articulate and feel even these principles and these issues without it compromising your performance on the pitch or, in his case, on the track in any way, shape, or form. Any any and and, and the point about not abandoning it or not boycotting it is so multi multifarious, isn't it? There's so many different perspectives on this. This is a really sweet one. It says, as a Welshman, this text while Melvin was talking, I can't boycott the World Cup as it's the first time we've qualified since 1958. And you just sort of go, yeah, I get it. I do get it. And yet, and yet, and yet, it's 12.46. James O'Brien on LBC. 10 to 1 is the time, and what a what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. John in Manchester says, I will personally be boycotting the World Cup. I feel for the players. Um, I, I hope they will speak out. Does anyone have any concerns for the personal safety of players, should they choose to do so, should they choose to speak against the regime while in Qatar? You'd like to think that in their, their position would insulate them against such a risk, but I wonder... Uh, the other potential issue is the targeting of fans of the nations whose players speak out. I, I mean, they'd be very, very, very wary of a genuine diplomatic incident, but what an almighty mess. Uh, I want to play you a clip of this week's full disclosure shortly, so I may only have time for one more call, possibly two. Gary's in witness. Gary, what would you like to say? Has there ever been a more ridiculous statement than let's keep politics out of football? No. Oh, really? Yeah, but that you goes up to the British talk? cabinet. The cabinet were doing it during the during the Euros because of the Black Lives Matter stuff. You know it's stupid. I know it's stupid. But exactly. Yeah, of course. Exactly. Everything's it's politics. Absolutely. Politics informs everything, and it's I'm vice versa. It's absolutely ridiculous. Of course, it, it should is. never have been held. But am I going to boycott it? Well, me not watching it isn't boycotting it. Is it really? I'm, I'm not going to be a hypocrite because I will be watching it. Yeah, same. Well, I was actually d- Do you know, is there somewhere inside where you think that you shouldn't be watching it? A little bit, yeah. but I don't like my gestures to be futile. No. <laughs> I like my gest- gest- my gestures, my political gestures or any other gesture to maybe have a small... Can I just give you an example? I yeah. found out a few weeks ago that a place I always shop donated to the Tory party. Right. After. I haven't shopped there since. Are you sure that? You've just said that on air. I mean, crikey, I wish you'd I wish you'd run that by me before you said it out loud on air. I mean, I don't think it would count as libel as being uh, accused on air of donating to the Conservative Party, but are you sure you got that right? Absolutely, yeah. All right, carry on. So you now don't it's shop one, at Asda anymore. The, it, was on, it was on the list. Yeah, this with the produ- I'm sure you're right, but I, I, I'm a JCB because of their Brexit support, right? Well, JCB is a huge donor, there's neither family. Anyway, but, 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 anyway but, how, how many bid how many how many JCBs were you buying? Normally uh, I had planned I had planned to buy a bulldozer. Had you really? Uh, but, uh, no, you had you stop <laughs> yanking my chain, man, will you? Seriously, I I'm, I'm gonna boycott <laughs> JCB. That'll teach them. I'm never gonna I'm gonna buy all my diggers but, from somewhere else. <laughs> I also I, I also um yeah. Well, I, I did mention something. I don't think the guy I spoke to wanted me to mention it. Well, don't then. You're frightened. Just don't. That's it. That's it. You're off. 
I take your point, but if he, if, if, if you've been cautioned against not saying something about businesses because we're not entirely sure what the situation may be. I mean, to be fair, the chair of ASDA is, is a Conservative Party peer. So there's probably been some sort of, I don't know if it's support or donations, but there are certainly links there. And he was the bloke on the question time last night talking about how Brexit had decimated everything. So what a strange world we inhabit. Um, I haven't got time, have I? Should I, play, I better play the clip. 55, got another one. Okay, squeeze in Jack, who's in Stoke-on-Trent. Jack, over to you. Hi, James. Uh, first, I just want to say thank you for having me on the show. You're very welcome. I think it's uh, appalling, to be honest, that FIFA can put out a statement like this, especially when they themselves do keep politics in football with things like allowing uh, banning Russia from the World Cup, which is something that definitely should happen. Mm. But also, I think the bigger issue with this is almost the potential action they would take against players who do chose to protest, as you mentioned earlier with um, Harry Kane or the Danish uh, kit manufacturer. They did already threaten to expel Norway if they qualified due to their numerous protests against Qatar. And I believe it potentially could be the same thing if players were to continue to protest as one of, I believe, the main reasons Qatar want to hold the World Cup there is similar to Germany in the 1936 Olympics to pretend there's nothing else going on in the country. They're a great country, and just to advertise. It's, PR, it's a PR coup, see. isn't it? It's like sports washing, I guess, which wasn't a phrase in the 30s. And is that, is that's the one where Jesse Owens kind of put a massive spanner in Hitler's plans, isn't it? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And, I, and I do believe it would be a similar thing now that if there were potentially various protests from other countries. There what you really, well, that fo- fortunately, it. sorry to interrupt, I'm just conscious of the time, you're not going to have a Jesse Owens moment because that would involve a gay footballer getting the golden boot or something like that. That would be the equivalent of teaching the Qatari regime a lesson about their own d- disgusting laws and, and, and beliefs. But yeah, yeah. well, I mean, who knows? That That is, uh, we'll have to wait and see when we will probably talk about some of these elements and we'll definitely be talking about Iran next week. Meanwhile, a little taster of this week's full disclosure, a bit of a different one. Broadcaster meets broadcaster, in this case, Adrian Childs, who's definitely lived a bit, as you'll know, um, and who, it turned out, lived, well, I knew already, but we, we grew up like two miles away from each other. Just the next village along from Kidderminster is where his family moved. Um, uh, when he was when he was young, it's a really nice interview. This, uh, and I, I don't use the word nice very often. It's a really lovely chat that I think you will enjoy, almost eavesdropping on. What were you like at school? Were, were you a, were you a good student? Did you flourish? Well, I don't know. I thought yes, I kind of was. Um, yeah, I kind of was. I, I did well without being exceptional, mm. but then. I mean, as you know, as you probably mentioned later, I was like 50 before I got. I, I sort of basically I cracked up, and then I had a, and then I was finally tested for ADHD, and he said, "Look, you've definitely got ADHD," mm. and and I remember my I, I I spoke to my I spoke to three people about it. My younger daughter, who I think you've met, albeit yeah. briefly, and uh, my mate producer. Paul Connolly from West Belfast TV producer, and then um, another one, my PA, a woman in her sixties, in, in, lives in Stanbridge, and they said, "Ah." <laughs> and then I gave them like a chapter of this book to read. I come across with the that had all like the sort of twenty key symptoms of mm. ADHD, and they all went, "All right, yeah, you've got it. Go and get yourself sorted," you know. And that, I mean, that's been transformational that diagnosis, but. I don't think I'm rewriting history when I look back and I can see it all going on. I mean, I was, you know, classically kids with ADHD be extremely disruptive yeah. and and all the rest of it. But And I wasn't particularly, I wasn't a naughty boy, but I can, you know, just that inability to settle, just fidgeting around, unable to, to you know, to, to pay attention. And I, I can just, I can just really sort of see it in myself now. I remember there was a school report I got and I was still, I think I was a, I, I don't think I was out of primary school and I showed it to my granddad and it said, uh, Adrian is somewhat highly strong. <laughs> and he got, my, my granddad was an uncomplicated bloke from Handsworth, like Arthur Childs, who lived in the same roads as us in Hackley. 
And he went, highly, what does highly strong mean? And I went, I, I don't know, I think it means like nervous. You go, nervous, nervous. What are you going to be nervous about? <laughs> I remember it really clearly, but that was, I was just, you know, oh, you know, Did highly, you recognize Yeah, you know, I absolutely, I absolutely recognized it. And, you know, I suppose you could say I was high functioning, but, you know, I think I was just, you know, it, it was just causing anxiety and sort of... But people wouldn't have known even No, 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 they, they wouldn't have known that. And, you know, and even have been running around sort of, you know, setting girls' pigtails on fire. Because you, know, you, they, were, you were happy yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 from the outside and you were popular yeah. and, and you were good at sport. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, could, yeah so, fairly good at sport. You know, yeah, yeah, ticking so, it off, you've got no reason yeah, to yeah. be... But look, and maybe, look, it wasn't a serious issue. It's Clearly. a lot worse for other people. Of course. But I think as I got older, it became a more serious issue because it just means, I don't know, in some ways you're ill-equipped to deal with life. If, if, you, don't, if you don't really understand it and work your way around it, mm. then everything becomes sort of too much and then getting famous particularly becomes a, you know, a complete head... I had no idea there was going to be so much bleepage during that little clip, but another reason to download the unexpurgated, uncensored, full full fat version of uh, of Full Disclosure this week with Adrian Charles. I've got I've recorded quite a few lately, actually. I've got some real treats for you coming up, but I shall have to stay tuned to find out what they are. Now, if you missed any of today's show, which was a, a Brexit special, we haven't done a Brexit special in God knows how long, but today was an absolute humdinger, albeit with air elements of Groundhog Day. If you missed any of today's show, you can listen back on Catch Up on Global player where you'll also find all of lbc's shows to catch up on as well as the world's biggest podcasts uh, download global player for free from your app store or head to globalplayer.com 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 head to globalplayer.com